Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Cane Pole Willie. Man, I've been saying we're gonna do it. We're finally about to do it. We're about to do the how to make a cane pole video. This is the first step. This is kind of the first process of getting it going, and it's the field work. So we're gonna start out. This is how to find and harvest bamboo for a cane pole. y'all right, this is the perfect time of year right now to start looking for some bamboo you got all winter the fishing slowed down you're gonna need a little project to be tinkering on cane pole is a perfect one getting the pole ready for next spring also the winter is great because you're gonna have all the leaves are gonna be off the tree and you're gonna be able to see in people's backyards and that's where you're gonna find the bamboo people have these growing as like a hedge a way to block out a busy street or a nosy neighbor in the back. People plant it all the time. It's everywhere, all across the country, all across the world. You can find bamboo in people's yards. All right, so you found some bamboo in someone's yard. Next step, just walk up, knock on the door, ask for permission. Most people aren't gonna care too much. Just be up front, tell them you wanna cut some poles for fishing. And uh, this stuff is such a voracious grower. It kind of takes over yards, so a lot of people aren't afraid to part with it. And you can get a couple poles, go ahead and cut four or five get you a little set from a backyard and you'll be set all right some supplies you'll need for cutting bamboo it's a little bamboo saw got this off amazon tiny little saw like this a lot of people think a machete but uh, really you don't have much backswing room all these combs grow so close here you don't really have a ton of swinging room so this little saw you can just get in there and cut one out you gotta think i mean at their widest they're about an inch and a half so you really don't need much next supplies you'll need good pair of gloves safety first just a, any pair of work gloves will do just don't want to cut yourself last thing you'll need just a little pair of wire snips and these are just used to cut the branches off as you go just so you're not having to bring the whole plant off i just like to cut them here in the field and a uh, good little pair of wire snips seems to work the best All right, when you show up to a clump of bamboo, you're gonna see not all these pieces are the same. It's like a whole different world when you get in here. It's dark, it's shaded, creates this whole little protective area. All right, as you see here, this right here is a full grown adult. It's real wide, has a little bit more of a yellow tint and goes up about 20, 30 feet. This right here is a super mature one that's grown old and died it's brittle it's cracked this is not what we want this is not what we want what we're looking for is combs out here on the edge a smaller diameter plant a young adult is really what we're looking for not too old and brittle not too green and young a small young adult what we're looking for is from ground to tip the exact size we want so with the cane pole, we're looking from anywhere from 10 feet to 14 feet. Some things to look for, good color all the way throughout. You want a nice green with maybe some yellow tint to it. Any flaws, you're gonna wanna overlook it. If there's any flaws in the pole at all, immediately scrap it, don't cut it. If there's any crazy bends you don't think you can take out, that's a no-go. Any fungus or spots, that's a no-go. You're looking for a sturdy pole that's good and green all the way to the top. One common mistake I've seen is broken off tips from high wind or storms. That's a no-go also. You're gonna want a good pole from ground to tip. All right, so we've inspected it. We found us a nice young adult. Looks good from ground to tip. Go and get your saw. You're going to cut it at the lowest node right here. This right here is called the comb. And these little notches right here, these are the nodes. You're going to cut it at the lowest one. You're going to make sure the ends cap. So right here at the ground level, just give it a nice clean saw. 
Easy as that. Let it drop to the ground. I'm gonna grab the pole. Walk it backwards just like this. There's gonna be a lot of branches. It's gonna give you a little bit of trouble, but just slowly walk it out. And there you go, you've harvested a pole. All right, so we got our pole cut. Next step I like to do just to make it easier for transportation is uh, go ahead and cut off the branches and do a last double check. Make sure there's no flaws in here. So what I'll do, get my clippers right here. And the branches, they grow on opposing sides. So this one will be on this one and it'll flip. The next node, it'll be on the other side. So I'll just do a rough cut right here at the base. Just like that. Go ahead and chop the branches off. And I'll just keep going down, flipping it over. Just a rough cut. We're not trying to get close or anything like that. We're just getting us a rough pole here. Going all the way down. So it's a clean pole. All right, we're going to go all the way to the top here starts getting a little thin so be careful here are the last couple feet just keep clipping them off and try and keep as much as you can till the end until it just becomes too fragile you think for a pole and my end is going to be about right here There we have it. The cane pole. This one's got a weird bend in the bottom, but I think we can get that out. It'll be a little bit challenge on the straightening, but all right. After we got a roughed out pole here, I'll just do a second check. Make sure there's no insect holes, no mold or fungus, no discoloring, no broken off tips. This one looks good though. Seems to be a good height. The height we're looking for is anywhere from 10 to 14 feet. I would suggest double your height. So if you're six foot, maybe look for a 12 foot pole. If you're going for brim, bluegill, shellcracker, 10 to 12 foot. If you're uh, doing some bigger things like river smallmouth or catfish, you might be looking for a little bit of extra range. You might go on the 14 foot, but uh, it helps to bring, if you've got a cane pole with you and it's 12 feet, you can bring that with you, kind of use it as a measuring stick. But I would say anywhere from 10 to 14, and I like about 12. All right, you're gonna have a bunch of branches left over. You're not gonna wanna leave these at someone's house. I just bring some trash bags with me. I'll just bag it up to go. Make sure we're leaving a nice clean area. Cause uh, these people don't have to let you cut bamboo. They're letting you on your property and uh, you need to leave it better than you found it. Just bag these up and take them with you. And after this, just gonna take the poles out to the car. And we'll be done here. All right, so you've harvested the poles. Now it's time to take them home. We got our branches here. Take them home. And I've got my seats laid down. I just got a little car here. So I don't have much room, but I like to just have them hang out on my trunk. My poles here. I'll slide them all the way to the front. Just have them hanging out like that. I just like to rip a little piece off the uh, trash bag. <laughs> a little neon string here. Tie it on here. And hopefully they'll make it home. All right, we got three poles harvested today. Just wanted to go out there real quick and show you guys how I harvest my cane poles. A few little tips on finding them. And bamboo is everywhere. All across this country, there's really no excuse. A lot of people will hit me up and say, oh man, there's no river cane growing in my area. You don't need river cane. All you need is any bamboo. All, all of these uh, different types of bamboo will work. Just find you some backyard bamboo and I'm sure it'll be fine. That's it. We're taking these poles home. Hopefully we get home without <laughs> them uh, breaking or someone running into the back of them. But Really the next step is just letting them dry inside. You're not going to want to let them sit out in the sun or uh, 
uh, sit on the ground and got potential to rot. So the perfect spot for me is in my garage. We're going to let them sit. And uh, on the next video, we're going to cover how to clean them up. These little branch areas right here, how to clean those up, all those little notches, and uh, how to straighten it. So be on the lookout for that video. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one.